The Universal Golf Ball Rollback is here, and we're here in this video to explain what's happening, when it'll affect you, and what it might mean for your specific game. I'm Ryan Balangie with Golf News Net. Thanks for coming back to another video. We heard last Friday in a report from Golf Digest that this was coming. The announcement was formally made by the USGA and the RNA today on December 6th. And want to go over the particulars of that announcement because it is somewhat technical in nature. And what the practical impact is for you is kind of muddied. So first, let's explain again what's happening with some full details instead of the overview that we gave in the last video. So... The overall distance standard that the USGA and the RNA have started in 1976, been changed three times otherwise, last time in 2004. They are keeping that standard the same, 317 total yards with three yards of tolerance for 320 yards. However, what's changing is the launch conditions by which they will test drivers to golf balls for conformity. And what they're going to do is change the testing conditions. The current testing conditions are a driver swung by a robot at 120 miles per hour, club head speed, delivering the golf ball with launch conditions of 10 degrees of launch with 2,520 RPMs of spin. That is going to change in 2028 for professionals and 2030 for amateurs to a test that requires the golf ball to be conforming with a test where the driver will be swung by the robot at 125 miles per hour club head speed that will launch at 11 degrees of launch and 2,220 RPMs of spin. What that means practically speaking, is it's an update to the fastest of the fast among touring professionals. And that's why they're changing this standard, because the standard by which a professional, particularly a male professional, is deemed to be swinging fast has changed. In 2007, on the PGA Tour, there was data that, that tracks club head speed, and they still do that each and every year with shot link. In 2007, there were nine players in total over the course of a season who averaged a swing speed of 120 miles per hour or more with the driver. Highest swing speed was Bubba Watson, 124-ish miles per hour. In 2022-2023, the season was just completed on the PGA Tour, there were 29 players. Highest swing speed was closer to 126.5 from Brandon Matthews. So the definition of speed has changed significantly on the PGA Tour in the last 16 years, and the USGA and the RNA feel like they have to update to keep with the times. That's a sign of athleticism, that's a sign of better training, that's a sign of knowing more about the golf swing than ever thanks to launch monitors. And so the USJ feels like it's got to keep up with that kind of standard. Fair enough. So how does that impact each and every golfer? Well, that's also different. What Statura originally reported was that there'd be more or less a 5% impact across the board. The USGA and the RNA present a different picture. So for the average person, the average recreational golfer, it's not going to mean as much compared to the fastest swinging, hardest swinging golfers on the planet. In that category, if you're someone who swings incredibly fast, whether you're a professional or amateur, whether you're in that 125 and above range, 120 and above range, that makes you really fast. If you're swinging that fast, you're going to see 13 to 15 yards less distance off the driver. If you were an average male touring pro playing on the PGA Tour, you're going to see 9 to 11 yards less off the tee. If you are a player competing on the Ladies European Tour or the LPGA Tour, you're going to see five to seven yards less with the driver. So those are all pro numbers. But what about amateurs? Well, the average male swings at 93 miles per hour with the driver. The average female recreational player swings at 72 miles per hour with their driver. So for the average female recreational player, almost no change. One to three yards of distance. For the average male player, it's about five yards maybe less. So if you're swinging in that 80 to low 90s range, you're probably going to see three to five yards of change. If you're swinging a little bit faster than that, obviously you go up a little bit. If you're swinging slower than that, obviously you go down a little bit. So again, the change being made here by the USGA and the RNA is not that drastic for the average golfer off the tee. What's also important to note, and this is something that they should have put in their press release, but they didn't. They, they talked about this with Jonathan Wall of Golf Magazine, who does a great job on the equipment beat as well. But what they indicated is that once you get down to like the five iron, five hybrid, five wood kind of thing, kind of like the longest iron you carry in your bag, the average recreational golfer will see no or almost no change in their distance. So once you get down to like six iron, seven iron, eight iron, certainly nine iron and your wedges, 
you're really not going to see any distance change if you're an average golfer. So if you swing a little bit faster and you're closer to kind of the, the average tour pro, okay, you might see a couple of yards off of your wedge and you know, two or three yards off of your scoring irons and maybe three or four yards off of your mid irons. But for most of us, it's not going to really mean a whole lot except a couple of yards off the tee. I think that's a good thing. Uh, I think that's a, a better result than probably people would have anticipated based on the initial reporting that this was going to be proportional and about 5% across the board. Well, if that's not the case, that's not so bad. Also, the implementation time is very long, right? So for professionals, you get until 2028 to start using a, a ball that will conform under these new rules. And you get until 2030 if you're a recreational player. So if you feel like stocking up on your favorite golf ball now and just having pallets of them by the time we get to 2030 and you can pull those out and go play with them, hey, have a great time. Don't worry about it. Unless you're playing in USGA and RNA competitions or competitions that use those rules and guidelines as a standard, you can do whatever you want. I mean, it's totally up to you. But if you are playing competitive golf in some fashion, whether that's a club championship, member guest, those types of things, you're going to have to conform to that standard, at least when you play in those competitions. The golf ball industry, uh, the reaction to it has been somewhat mixed. We, we know the position of Titleist and their parent company, Akushnet, that they have long said they don't think there should be any kind of change. They weren't for the model local rule idea that would have created bifurcation in the standards. They're, they haven't put out a statement today, however. Bridgestone and Callaway have put out statements already. They have said they would have preferred a bifurcation of the equipment standard instead of a universal rule change. So that's interesting that their positions will probably be different than that from Titleist and Akushnet. The LPGA has put out a statement. They've said they are happy that there's not going to be bifurcation. They think everyone should play under the same set of rules. They didn't think there was a distance problem on the LPGA, but they're going to support it. The PGA Tour is not in support of the rule change. They don't think that the updated testing standard is fair, or particularly reflective of what's happening on the PGA Tour, despite what I would say is data to the contrary. Who knows what that stance is going to ultimately look like. But so far, at least the reaction seems to be from the majority of stakeholders. They might not agree with the action, but they're going to go along with it because they believe in having a unified set of rules and standards. How that all works out will still very much to be determined, but I wanted to get this in front of you, give you an idea of what the actual proposal is, what the actual change is going to be, and how the USGA and the RNA feel it will impact you, the golfer, without doing anything different. If you want, you can take this opportunity to go get fit for uh, a new driver or new irons. Uh, obviously, you can do that in the future. And for a lot of golfers, even though that's not an expensive thing to do, that could mean 15 or 20 additional yards with a lot of the clubs in your bag. Uh, I play with lots of folks who have played golf forever, and they take a long time between buying clubs. It's an expensive decision. It's an important one for them. But when they get properly fit for it, the distance increase and the change in the quality of their game is huge. So this may be an opportunity for people in the industry, uh, parts of the industry, club fitting, lessons, and, and to a degree equipment, particularly irons and drivers, to get people in things that are better fitting and hopefully improve their performance more, even against the rolled back golf ball. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I'm Ryan Balaji, and we'll see you next time.